Okay. So uh, yeah, if you don't mind, just uh, tell me your name, uh, where you're located, and then where you invest. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So my name is Maggie Kennedy. I live in Toronto, Ontario, in Canada. Um, I invest primarily in Toronto. I've been investing for probably about 17 years now in real wow. estate. <laughs> yeah, that's super cool. I know I, I keep thinking about like when I started, I'm like, wow, I'm going on my eighth year myself, but like, it just seems like yesterday. Sometimes. Time just flies. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, congrats. Okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, if you don't mind telling us a little bit about uh, like how you got started um, what those numbers looked like and, sure. uh, yeah. Yeah. So how I got started, actually, I, I got started very young, right out of school. I actually, um, started my first full-time job. So I started a job I, I didn't really, you know, enjoy and realized really quickly. And I think I had that like fire mentality, right? Like some more mainstream now, um, financial independence, retire early. I had that mentality very early on, like literally when I started working and I realized like my nine to five at the time just wasn't going to get me there. And so um, I, I'm a big saver, saved up enough money, um, got enough to put a down payment on, on a home. So got 20% down. Um, and then I had purchased it for at the time, $197,000 which is very low here <laughs> in Toronto. Um, and then probably a couple of years later, sold it to close to 300. So, I mean, you know, being very young and green and junior, not having anybody um, that I know in real estate, it was huge, right? Like I was able to 10X my, my income and I thought like, wow, I could really level up here. Like I really got something going on here. And from there, it sort of just sort of blew up where I just continued to, you know, take that money, reinvest it and continue to buy properties, rental properties on my own. Yeah. So um, a couple of things uh, that's congrats uh, selling your first pro <laughs> property for 100, you know, 100K yeah. uh, gross profit is pretty rad. Uh, or, you know, I mean, you, you get sell fees and all that stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. but well, let's just call it a round number for the sake of this. But uh so, and it sounds like you're a saver. Uh, so you yeah. got 40 K you saved up 40 K for your initial down payment. Is that what I'm hearing? Pretty much. Yeah. Cool. yeah. All right. And, uh, and then, so you lived in this one, I, I presume or. Yeah. Yeah. So I did. Um, and it was, you know, um, so that was just basically like, a, a buy and hold, right. Just sort yeah. of with the intention of knowing I was going to sell it. Um, and all of my properties that I actually lived in and ended up selling as well, um, oh. cause I, 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 I bought properties, lived in it also sold it, but also bought other properties that I was renting out. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that being said, yeah. So I was living in them knowing that I never see my, myself in a property for a very long, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, two years max at that time. And I was in my twenties, I was single, I was like, whatever, you know, I don't, I don't have to live here <laughs> and just going ahead and flipping that. And then taking those profits and then reinvesting in something else. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, it makes me think. I used to have a friend uh, way back when that she said like the only things she wanted to own were enough things to fit in a car, and that was it. Yeah, like, just like a Toyota, like Corolla, you know. <laughs> sure. Like you know, you you think when you get your first place or you always want like home ownership is like a great feeling, but then you realize like I'm house poor, right? Like mm -hmm. to me, what was enough? You didn't, you didn't need a big house, right? You just, you just needed to, for me at the time in my twenties, it was, how can I get ahead? And that's all, you know, that was just in my head. How can I move to that next step without necessarily having to do that at work, like climbing the corporate ladder and, and some, or anything like that. that that's just not me. Mm -hmm. um, so just understanding that there were other sources of, you know, streams of income that really worked well. And, and this, this worked well for me. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So now that you're settled or are you settled, but how long have you been in your current house? I'm just curious now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm married. I have a, I have a daughter. And so like we, we looked at this house and we're like, okay, we'll stay here for like 10 years. So okay. in, home, <laughs> in this current home, we've been here for about five. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I was just curious, like, so uh, just for the sake of, if it's humorous, what was the first, like, furniture item that you bought and you're like I'm gonna have this with me for the next 10 oh, years yeah you know those armoires that used to actually put televisions in yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't exist anymore but I remember 
I bought that, but I didn't have enough money to buy it. So I actually had to finance it and pay monthly payments for this huge armoire um, because you can, you know, you can close it and it's a furniture piece. It was awesome, right? Um, and I thought like, oh, I'm going to take this with me. You know, you for specific things and, you know, you, you have an attachment to these things because they're so special to you. Um, and it's funny, we got rid of it like two years ago because we're like, <laughs> What are we doing? They're so heavy, yeah. They're so heavy. <laughs> to um, like an armoire for my daughter's clothes, but yeah. it was happening. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. I was just curious. That's fun. So uh, to back up a little bit, um, I guess if you could share on like what your why is, like why on earth did you get started in real estate investing? Why is that your thing? Yeah. Uh, um, I, for me, it was, um, you know, why I got started in, in real estate investing was I, I love doing so many other things than, you know, obviously my full-time job, I teach yoga, you know, um, I just, I love giving back and I, I would love to just have the time, you know, and now being a mom too, and working full-time, you, you recognize how special that that is. And for me back then it was, yeah, you know, I just want to get a bigger house. I want to get, you know, whatever. But through time, your goals change. And I recognize now that I would love to just be able to have the choice to be able to say, maybe I don't have to work so much. Maybe I can scale it back to part-time or not have to work. At and I think that being able to have that choice is a huge thing for me. Um, just able to do the things I love without having the restriction of time and money, you know, yeah. like probably mostly everybody else. That was a big thing. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent agree with that. Um, so you mentioned you, you still work full time. Is that I as do. a yoga instructor or what is your no different? <laughs> I work in labor relations. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually really enjoy my, my, my job, um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, always, always, um, handling different challenges every day, every day. Yeah. Okay, great. So do you have a goal to, um, to ever quit that? Or are you going to keep doing that? And then the side gig is the side gig or how does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like what I do. Um, I yeah. think again, you know, if, if something, you know, what I like is that, there's been so many, you know, with COVID and there's been a lot of layoffs and it's, you know, we're experiencing right now in my organizations and I'm seeing that. And again, I think it just goes back to, it's nice to have that choice and not have to worry so much because, you know, through these years, you're able to acquire assets that can help you if you, you know, have six months where you're not working or you're looking for another job. You know, ideally for me, um, I like, I still like it. it. You know, if I had a choice between my full-time and my, like being a full-time real estate investor, hundred percent, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just do investing and, and other things would be, would be amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, things might change. And uh, if, if that choice becomes available, yeah, I would love to, I would love to scale back a bit and, and, and work on, on my true passions. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's see. Let me get back to the questions here because I've been sure. jumping around a little bit, I think. All right. So what's what's your least favorite part of real estate investing? Yeah. Um, so my least favorite part about real estate investing, I would say, is I think it doesn't matter how long you're in it. I think there you're always going to come across challenges that you don't expect. Like, I think when you're in it for so long, you can really anticipate what's going to happen when you... Um, get someone who's accepted your offer all the way up to the close. But in between that, you don't know what's going to happen. You can get an appraisal and you can find a major issue and then that deal's done. Um, just recently on the two deals that, that we, we closed, um, our banks on the last day had said like, we need a two week extension because we can't close. We had to go back to the seller and it was really stressful and those things you don't have control of. Um, and during that time, we were like, oh, are we going to lose it? Because it's a hot market with the seller to say, you know what, forget it, put it back in the market and try to get more money, right? So mm -hmm. there's always these challenges that come up that you just don't anticipate, no matter how long you've been in, in, in the industry, you just sometimes aren't prepared. Um, but I think what's important is to really have that level head to understand, okay, you know what, it's just another challenge. Yes, it's stressful, um, but you just have to understand the bigger picture um, and that you have to anticipate these things. When it happens, it, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. 
once it passes, you learn from it. Um, because I find that some of these challenges too are brought upon from myself without even knowing it, whether that be, you know, maybe it wasn't me who followed up with that contractor because I assumed they were going to do something mm -hmm. or a real, my realtor, whatever, you know? So a lot of it is, is learning for, for myself when these challenges come up, um, during though, when it happens, it's, it's never fun though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, every deal is very different. Even if you've done a similar deal, it, it definitely, uh, there's always unique challenges. And it's funny because uh, I, I love running. So I try to like work out a lot of that in my head. I'm like, okay, well, if this, you know, if this person is out on the hard money, like this person's in like this, you know, like always trying to like, it's like a beautiful mind and there's like all these little strings of totally. numbers. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> exactly what you mean. That's that's all I think in my morning runs, right? Like, yeah. is this feel gonna go through? Like yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh right now I'm working on a, a mobile home project, which I've never done before. And so cool. there's like so many extra calls that I, you know, haven't anticipated. And I actually hate talking on the phone. Um so <laughs> So in my, in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, how can I systematize this to hire someone else to do this in the future? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like what kind of processes you have to put in place? So you're, yeah. you focus on other things like getting right. a deal or something, right? Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. I feel like there's this, uh, this one person told me one time to write down like the three things you hate most about like whatever your job is and then like hire that stuff out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, totally. Delegate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway. Um, all right. Well, cool. Let's see. Oh yeah. Um, so what was the first real estate acronym and yours might be a little different, um, than ours. I'm not sure, but probably similar. Yeah. Which one was the first acronym that you were like, what? The <laughs> first acronym, uh, for me it was R2, sorry, RTO. RTO. So, okay. Yeah. So rent to own. Rent to uh, own. Okay. I was like, yeah. I don't even know that one. Oh, okay. really? oh yeah. yeah. So, and it, it, yeah, so it's an agreement whereby uh, a deal in which you commit to renting out a property mm -hmm. um, with the option of buying it before the lease is, yeah. is done. So uh, that was like a new, totally new concept to me. And I, and I, for the first time, joined the seminar about different real estate strategies years ago. And, you know, this terminology came up. And it like just blew my mind and everybody was like, uh-huh, yeah, okay, RTO, you know, and everybody's talking about this, this strategy and how they've done it. And I'm, I was completely lost. Um, yeah. like it was cool to learn about it, but yeah, did not know anything about it. That's hilarious. Cause like, I know lease options and rent to own, like the full phrase, but I've never heard anyone say RTO. So that's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Because I would be like, what? What do you yeah. like when you first said it? I was like, I don't know that one. But then you said rent though. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of people just say lease option uh, here. So I don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. That's interesting. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that. That's yeah, fun. Absolutely. I don't know. Like my first one was cap rate. Uh, uh, like what? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, that's a confusing one still to this day. Yeah. A lot of people just don't. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like San Francisco Bay Area is all about cap rates. Like everybody's like, "What's a cap rate? What's a cap rate?" The <laughs> and you know, and I'm I was I'm originally from Arkansas, so I was like, "We don't talk in cap rates yet." Maybe I don't know. But this was you know again years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're like we talk in cash flow. We don't really like. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah, it's funny. People use different terminologies, right? So you're constantly switching. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny. All right. Um, let's see. So yeah. Um, tell us about, uh, a setback, uh, in your real estate and real estate investing journey and like what you did or process to, to solve it. Sure. So one of the setbacks I had was when I, I think when I started, like I said, I had this, the fire mentality happening. FIRE, not the burning kind stands for financial independence, retire early. This kind of fire you certainly would like to get close to. So, what exactly is financial independence? Retire early. FIRE's principle is simple. Save 70% of your monthly income to enjoy an early retirement, much earlier than the conventional age of 65. You can then live off your savings with small withdrawals. FIRE is a movement that gives you independence from a full-time job. 
You work when you choose, if at all. And, you know, it's not something we talked about with friends or family. We certainly didn't talk about this at the dinner table. So at the time when I started investing in my, you know, years ago, I, I kind of felt quite isolated because I didn't know that there were mentors, like you could probably find mentors out there. And perhaps there were groups, like there's, there wasn't any podcasts or, you know, right. communities like this now. So I think my biggest setback was not taking the initiative to really find that group, to, to really try and network with others. Because I think, because I already had the mentality, because I was already doing it, I feel like I probably could have scaled to, you know, and probably done more had I took the initiative to find that. And, you know, this is why I sort of stress um, to new investors that, you know, when you're not sure about what to do, like right away, try and find a mentor, like try to get those answers because then you end up staying in that analysis paralysis stage. You don't end up ever end up doing anything. You start, you, you second guess yourself. So for me, it was definitely um, that time frame where I just sort of stood stagnant and, and didn't, and didn't consider finding that help that I needed in order to be able to effectively scale. And that's things like creating your team, um, you know, um, understanding different strategies that you might be able to do to, to scale. So, so things like that, I, I think um, would have definitely helped me at the time. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's great advice. I still struggle with the networking piece. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not easy, right? Like you're putting yourself out there. It's it's also time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm not that, an extroverted person to go yeah. out into rooms and, you know, but I force myself to do it because I know that because I want to, like, I want to learn. I want to be in these rooms with other people. That's the only way. And so it's really just getting past that. Um, yeah. And again, just thinking like, what is the end goal? Like, why am I here? Right. Sort of front of mind. Yeah, I think naps help me too. I'm more introverted, and I'm like after a day of like back to back meetings and talking, I'm like I need a nap. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I need a nap. For sure. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It doesn't come naturally. <laughs> yeah. I'm exhausted after like 20 minutes of talking. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. I, yeah. I haven't tried the naps. I need to do that more for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know how old uh, your your children are, but maybe like see if you can combine it with them. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's sick. She's past that, but yeah. I uh, probably schedule it in. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So I uh, this past year I read the book uh, Why We Sleep, and they talk about like the you know the origin of humans and how you know we're actually meant to take naps. So then I like started trying to like incorporate it, and I'm back off of the napping again. But I got to get back. Yeah. To it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I bet. Like, I'm sure if you took a little, like, if everybody took a 20 minute nap yeah. in a day, I'm sure yeah. productivity would just. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's it's extremely important for like the way that we're built, like our biology, it's in, ingrained. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good point. Anyway. All right. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. What's your favorite part of real estate investing? Um, my favorite part of real estate investing, I think is, you know, just um, seeing, so I've been in it for 18 years and, and really it's just seeing while you're in it, you don't really see it. You know, you, you work at it later on, you understand how you benefited from it. Right. So I think it's really seeing that, that growth throughout the years, how it's benefited myself and my family. So, I mean, that's always a good thing to see that happen. Um, and I think for me, it is also, um, I just, now more than ever am so appreciative of just the community that we have whether it's on IG Facebook or whatever and being able to connect with like-minded people which I didn't have before mm -hmm. and it really helps to talk through situations that you might have you know again for the last year we've been here in Toronto I mean for I can speak for myself I've been indoors the whole time I work from home as well so I mean being able to to be more social being online and you know um, and this is why I started the page on IG is, you know, to really try and help others and, and get people to see that, you know, um, you could do it, you could start investing, it's easy, you know, it's, I mean, it's not easy, but what I mean is, you know, it, there's, it, there's interest there, you know, and questions, 
happy to help and make it more accessible. I feel like that's yeah, part of yeah. that. That's part of my journey too. Like back when I started, I did a, an FHA 203k loan, which is through the Federal Housing Administration. Right. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of hoops. I wanted to quit all the time, and like it sounds daunting, but after you've been through one, like it gets easier. And yeah. just like being able to tell other people you know, in a more streamlined way or like help them get through that is a little bit, you know, it, it's just nice to give back in that way because I didn't have anyone when I started either uh, to like go ask questions, you know, like, I, or at least I didn't know if there were groups. Uh, Instagram wasn't around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, very interesting. Um, so also I wanted to mention, uh, yeah, uh, like, tagging on to while you're in it, you don't really realize the growth so much sometimes like to be able to step back. I agree with that hundred percent. It wasn't until I like, cause I was a rental, you know, like hold investor for a while and now right. I do some flips. Um, but yeah, it was when I sold my first property, I was like, Oh yeah, I am actually making money. Like, <laughs> cause, cause everything was just going right back into the property. Exactly. So you don't get to touch it for a long time if you're exactly. like set up that way. And so I, I'm like, why, why do I feel broke? But like, I'm not, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Cause I think when you close on, you, you close on one, you're on to the next. Yeah. So your mind is always thinking, what's the next thing? What's the right. next, you know, how yeah. am I going to do this? Right. Yeah. Or you don't even stop to think like, maybe I should enjoy this, you know, yeah, <laughs> tell absolutely. people about what you're doing and share. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the great part about it. Yeah, that's true. One of the things that I like from a uh, bigger pockets, uh, Brandon Turner mentioned a long time ago when I was first listening about like each project, like scheduling a vacation or like, you know, especially with your partner and your family, uh, like each successful closing or whatever. And yeah. I'm like, that's always really stuck with me. So I'm like, okay, we're going to Hawaii this year. Like we're going to, yeah. you know, like, no, you're sure. right. we should definitely celebrate. Like it's, it's tough work, you know? It is. Yeah. It is. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I gotta, I gotta propose that next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although it did get me into a little trouble because my partner's like, um, how many have you closed? Like, I think we're, we're a little bit behind on this. <laughs> and I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> uh anyway where's the contract let me see where i signed that <laughs> yeah no it's there let's just book that trip to hawaii it's all good <laughs> <laughs> all right oh uh, let's see so oh yeah um how have you dealt with covid challenges uh i was gonna say like did you have any but everybody did so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i definitely this time last year it was it was certainly scary you know um First off, it was more of concern for our tenants because like, how are they doing? How are their families doing was the first one. We were all feeling like that for ourselves, but then you have people living in your homes, you know, that are good people. So initially you're like, oh my goodness, hope everything's okay. And then there's a second piece to say, oh, hopefully, you know, financially you will be okay and they'll be able to, you know, pay their rents, which was something that you had to think about as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it was definitely a challenge. Um, and I think in, from that perspective, we made sure we, we reached out to our tenants. And, you know, I think one of the, the great things as I look back at that is we've always kept the lines of communication open. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of that is selecting the right tenants from the beginning that, you know, when we have these discussions to say, hey, you know, what are you guys okay with your rents for the next six months? What do you need from us? How can we help you? You know, they were very much appreciative of that. And, you know, when there were issues, they call us and let us know. So, um, you know, as much as it was challenging, it, it, it made me more aware of how that communication piece with the tenants was so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Uh, I, so similarly, I, I was in the same boat. Uh, we reached out right away. Anyone that needed a payment plan. We only mm -hmm. had one tenant that needed a payment plan uh, and they were caught up within six months. Uh, right. Not a big deal, but I didn't have any move outs or any issues with missed payments or anything. But yeah, it's the, I, I'm a direct contact. They text me, they call me. Yes. Um, yeah, and, and it's interesting because most of the friends that I have in the industry uh, that you know are in you know very communicative did well, they did fine. Yeah, it's yeah. the ones that are the big corporations, the big companies 
uh, that don't have that direct line that they like, you know, especially in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, there are tons of apartment buildings that just lost everything. It's the small mom and pop shops that seem to fare pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, but yeah, good point. Um, let's see. Please share any challenges you personally had with being a woman in uh, the real estate space. <laughs> Some challenges I had being a woman. I, I kind of compare it to um, going to the gym. You know, when the first time you go into the gym, your intention when you go is to get healthy and fit. And then you walk in and you're like, what is this equipment? You have no idea what you're doing. You see all these fit people working out and then you, you keep going and then you know what you're doing. And then you don't even see anyone around you because you got it right. So I, I look at it the same when I started entering these rooms, yes, it was very male dominated and yes, I felt a little bit intimidated and, you know, but as soon as I sort of shifted my mindset to say, what do I want out of this, you know, and, and opened myself up and started talking to people and didn't have that, that initial thought in my head when I walked in, like, oh, you know, like, do I fit in here? You know, how am I going to, how am I going to be? Um, I just didn't see it anymore because, you know, when you, when you talk to people and you tell people your story and you open up, people are inclined to help you. They want to hear what you have to say. You're, you're in a room with like-minded people. So, um, it was initially getting over that, um, that feeling of, you know, a little bit of feeling a little bit uncomfortable at first, to be honest. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially at the time when I went in, like, and again, this wasn't recently, this was probably about 10 years ago. So um, yeah, it was, it, it wasn't easy initially. I just had, I just had to keep showing up. Yeah. Like, like yeah. You know, meeting you go into and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to go. You just, you just go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was uh, more of like, yeah, reaching out to people and learning which people I wanted to work with. Cause there are some, especially I had trouble with contractors who, you know, would, would just like their bids would be just so outlandish. And so I had to implement a rule of like, you know, always get three bids at least minimum, right. you know, have people compete against each other. Uh, don't like go with the first thing that someone tells you, <laughs> you know, yeah, for um, sure. and, and it's funny because, you know, now I still deal with some people, like, for instance, I was looking at a property in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's a, a Southern area. Uh, and so this gentleman was like trying to explain what an escrow is to me before even like knowing my experience. And I'm thinking like, if a man called about this property, you would not be saying that to him. And it's just like one of those things where I have to be like, okay, I know what that is. Thank you very much. Uh, can we get back to the deal? Like I have managed 150 million portfolio. I got this. <laughs> like, <Interesting>. um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And now that you say that, you know, um, again, looking for new people. So for example, if you're looking for a new real estate agent or, you know, whatever, um, there's questions being asked almost like, you know, you need this to, you know, this amount of money to qualify. And it's interesting, you know, and, and that happened to me actually recently. When yeah. I and I, I was a bit taken back almost to say, you know, would the same conversation happen if my husband had called this person? I don't, I don't know. And, yeah. and that's the thing. And that's the thing. Um, I don't want to think that way. And it's unfortunate that you have to, but yeah, I hear yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting. I just, I, no one has like said something like that to me in a very long time. So yeah, I was, I was taken aback to you. I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> like, um, so it's just interesting little nuances sometimes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, all right. So, oh, what would you say to an aspiring real estate inv investor, you know, just starting out? Yeah. So what I would say to um, a new investor would be to understand what your why is, like your purpose, because you're going to come across some hard times. It's, it's not easy. Um, and also, I think stick to your strategy. So if you're going to learn about real estate investing, maybe just start off with one strategy and get really good at that before you start. Cause it's easy to get like shiny objects everywhere. You can flip, you can wholesale, you can do all these really cool things and you can get really caught up on that. 
And I think it's, yeah, stick to your strategy and, and focus on your goal and do that one, one strategy very well before maybe venturing off on something else, especially when you're really new. I think that's really important. Yeah, that's true. That you can do so many different things in this industry. It's, yes. it's so fascinating. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I do jump to the next shiny thing, but you're right. I, I have done the other things first. So that's, that's great advice. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause right now I'm actually venturing into wholesaling myself and I'm like, okay, this, I, I see this, you know, flipping's fun, but sometimes you want to slow down and not have to run that renovation from yeah. 2000 miles away. I'm a long distance person. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I, and I hear you on that. Like I, I did, you know, I, I have attempted the wholesaling as well. And it's interesting, right? Like different. Um, yeah. So, and again, it's like, do I pursue this? Because it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. to shift focus so again, it has to go back to, okay, what is my purpose? What do I want to do? You know, what works and fits with my life right now? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All righty. Let's see. So we just got one left, uh, which is any recommendations, websites, books you've read that were really powerful. This is shout out time. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like the one I think for me is Rich Dad Poor Dad. I think for people who are just starting that one was a big game changer for me. And I think a lot of people who have been investing know this book very well, but you know, that was, that was a good one just to really understand, you know, Absolutely. how to think differently. And that was it. And I really liked the book, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Sinek? Oh, okay. Sinek? Yeah. And that is again, going back to your purpose of why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, um, when I started, I had a lot of challenges. I had a lot of roadblocks. And to get past that, you really have to understand, you know, what is your purpose and why are you trying to achieve this goal? With everything else going on, that's that one thing that needs to drive you. And again, that was a great um, book to really reflect on, you know, why we do the things we do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's great. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions I have. Do you want to add okay. anything else? Um, no, you know what? I just wanted to say thank you. I, I really appreciate you, um, you know, taking the time to speak with me to talk about my journey. And yeah, no, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's been it's been wonderful to get to know you and uh, wish you well on your journey and thank reach you. out anytime. And, uh, and after this, I'll send you a follow up email if you'll just like, um, either link or just like type out uh, your shout out piece. Um, just so like, cause Joan's going to edit and I, I don't know, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you can't hear exactly the way someone says something. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a problem. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you All so right. much. Enjoy yeah, your weekend and happy Friday. Well. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>